What's up Nitro Gang? Welcome to part 3 of this associated MGT 8.0 video series. In the first part, I went to pick this up. In the second part, I went over some of the most interesting features of the chassis, went over the history, talked about spinners on these Proline Big Joe's 40 series wheels, and in fact, I might actually get the spinners. A lot of you guys said that, hey, they're pretty cool and I should get them. I just want to make a couple corrections. I said previously, this was not a body that included a flag. Well, I was wrong. Someone did correct me, and I don't mind accepting being wrong I was wrong maybe I'll actually make my own flag it'll be a nitro gang flag maybe it'll be a t-max Tony flag we don't know but there's gonna be a flag in here sooner or later so don't worry about it in this video we're gonna get more into the details on the actual condition of this truck I am going to be removing the cooling head and checking inside I know for a fact the motor is not seized because I was able to move the flywheel with my finger but it is not as free as you would expect it to be so we're gonna remove this enormous cooling head take a look inside this 0.50 size engine and guys we're gonna take a look inside this black crate right over here this is an old GM crate someone pointed that out so honestly that's kind of ironic I like that years ago I think when Jim Cramer was giving out advice on MSNBC I took his idiotic advice I invested in GM lost a good amount of money so now I pretty much just invest in vintage nitro RC cars as you see right over here that goes for motors this is an old HPI Savage 25 engine this right here this is an investment guys these things never go bad doesn't matter how the stock market does you could always use a spare HPI Savage engine and then I'm gonna be comparing this in terms of size and I think my overall experience to the other remaining monster trucks that I have there's the T-Max there's a Traxxas Revo there's a Tamiya Terra Crusher there's a HPI Savage K 5.9 and uh, I'm not sure what else there is but that's basically at least four that I have to compare this to I think that means I probably got to be getting some other monster trucks you guys name any, put in the comments that you want to see me get, and I will do my best to try to get those. This is sometimes the funnest part. You never know what goodies you're going to get. Man, check that out, guys. Oh, yeah. This is the original associated radio. This is the XP30. Now, unfortunately, it's not a 2.4 gigahertz radio. It is an FM radio. There's a crystal here in the back, but it should be just fine. From what I've read, this thing was specifically developed uh, with, you know, computer stuff here for the model that we have. Let's see if it works. Yeah, it works. LED is on, 12 volts. The wheel feels, honestly, really smooth, nice. I like the foam on it. These associated radios always had a really good hand feel to me. Um, they seem way more expensive than the modern ones that pretty much every single RTR comes with. But, you know, this is like an over $500 truck. Let's see what else is in here. We have some foam elements for the MGT 8.0. Now, apparently the filter on my truck is a different one, so um, I cannot use these as they are. We have some fuel. I love looking at old fuel just to see what people ran. This is Sidewinder. It's pretty okay fuel. What matters is the oil and the nitro content. So this is 20%, 12% oil. Um, this is actually pretty okay fuel. $12.49, pretty average price for a quart. I have seen cheaper. But, you know, that's okay. Sidewinder fuel. And here it is. The infamous Traxxas Top Fuel, guys. Now, the problem with Traxxas Fuels is they have way too much oil. And uh, almost nobody knows about it because if you look on the sticker here, it only says 20%. It doesn't say the oil content like the other fuel did. And this is way too much oil. People have pretty much confirmed that it is 18% oil content. And of course, your engines are going to be, you know, full of oil. It's good in terms of protection, yeah, but if you don't run too lean, you don't need 18% oil. So this is the main issue with the Traxxas fuels is the oil content. Next up, we got some shock caps. So apparently the associated model here has issues with shock caps just like every single plastic body shock cap on a Traxxas RC ever made. We have an old Duratrax IntelliPeak Pulse charger, you know, to charge your regular non-LiPo batteries. I actually used to use a charger just like this and I still do to this day to charge my uh, nickel metal packs or uh, some other packs that are non-LiPo. These are actually really reliable and they did a pretty good job. This right here is what you use to start the car. So apparently the thing has so much compression that you just could not have a pull start. They had to develop their own, I guess, copy of the rotor start system. You have a shaft here, it goes into the front. 
like that locks in place you know once you move this here and uh plug a battery here on top boom press a button here press the trigger and you have a uh, pro start system pretty cool to find stuff like this is really really difficult these days because these models were just expensive and you know there's not that many of these for sale on ebay we got some team associated 60 weight shock oil i could definitely put this to good use i hate buying shock oils right here guys the kind of stuff i like the original manuals that these things came with this is like you know rc literature this is what i'm going to use to study um for my debates in case certain people want to actually do a debate with me but you know i'm going to review this kind of like doug demuro and um well, i'm going to get back to you on this later but once again just so freaking cool we have a special insert here about just the associated engine itself all of your settings how to start it how to break it in blah 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 this stuff is really really important actually because you know it's sometimes hard to find although if you do your research online properly you will have no problem you guys like my tower of monster trucks that's why right. i've been collecting for quite some time on the bottom here we have my favorite Tamiya Terra Crusher. I actually used to own this when it was brand new. I think this was my second RC that I ever had as a kid. This is the HPI Savage K5.9, the one with the second largest motor here. Of course on the top of the tower we have the MGT. On the bottom we have the T-Max Tony Special, the T-Max 3.3. Here's the Revo 3.3. I also have another Revo with an OS engine. But guys, this is my tower of monster trucks. People think aliens built the pyramids. Well, I'm gonna say that nitro monster trucks are gonna build a pyramid for me right now. So who knows who built the pyramids? I'm building my own pyramid. Here they all are in a different formation. This is actually pretty hard to even get this into the frame. But I gotta say, the Tamiya Terra Crusher here in the front is bigger than I would say all of these other ones, which is quite ironic because this is probably the oldest design. And it's running a .18 engine with the most problematic transmission I've ever seen in any hobby grade RC. But it doesn't matter, I still love this. Do you see how huge these wheels are? This is all factory. This is a stock Tamiya Terra Crusher. This is a Revo 3.3, another Revo 3.3. The Savage XL 5.9, the T-Max, and the Associated 8.0. The Terra Crusher is honestly, in my opinion, probably the best looking one out of the bunch. You guys tell me what you like, but clearly they all have their upsides and downsides. What are the upsides of running a Trax a small block engine? Well, they're very, very fuel efficient. What are the upsides of running an MGT 8.0? Well, you got a helicopter engine. What's the upside of running a Tamiya Terra Crusher? Honestly, not much other than it's freaking cool. I like it no matter what. There's nothing anybody could do to change my mind on why the Tamiya Terra Crusher is my freaking favorite RC in the world. Of course, T-Max Tony is going to always say the T-Max is his favorite, but still, I love the Terra Crusher. Nothing anyone is ever going to do about that. Now, the associated MGT, even though it has the largest engine, you can clearly see the Savage over there is a little bit longer than the Associated. Now, I have them lined up, you know, wheel to wheel in the back, but of course there is a bumper sticking out of the Associated, so it's a little bit unfair. But if you just look at the wheelbase on the Savage, you can clearly see the wheels are about, let's say, maybe uh, an inch and a half forward of these wheels. Now, these are not the original wheels. The stock Associated wheels were actually a little bit bigger than these, but a little bit narrower at the same time. Now, if you're asking yourself, what is the best overall truck here? Honestly, I don't think anyone could really ever answer that because they're all specific niche RCs. You know, here is a collectible Tamiya. Here are two small block Traxxas. Well, can't forget about that one over there. Of course, this one needs some work as transmission problems. T-Max Tony broke this one recently. The MGT is just a unique big block monster truck. The Savage XL K5.9, well, that's the largest engine Nitro ever put into a Savage. Until you have one of each here, and this is not the end of the list of what I have, trust me guys, um, you're never going to be really able to decide which one is the best because they're all unique to me in a particular way and for a particular reason. That's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to check out the condition of the MGT. This video series is about that bad boy right there. Let's get back to it. Time for some engine work. Let's remove the body. First, I'm gonna show you the engine is not seized. I'm not gonna start it in the back with a drill. I'm just gonna spin this flywheel with my finger. It is really, really tight. But if you look closely, it does actually spin. I mean, this is not as good as you want it to spin, 
But you know what? We have movement. This is an indication that this thing is fully restorable and repairable. Let me show you a couple of my other big block motors. I just want to point out the difference in the size of the cooling heads. This is an SH.28 from an Exceed. This is an HPI Savage 25. This already knows the .50 from a helicopter. Take a look at this cooling head compared to the HPI one. The HPI one is significantly taller. In fact, it seems like it has at least three or four more fins on top than this one on the Associated. Well, that's because this is an original helicopter engine and they basically just stuck on any cooling head here. From my understanding, this is the same one that was on the Thunder Tiger. All of these cooling heads here, you notice there's only four holes for the screws to hold on to the motor. This one also has just four screws on top of the cooling head, really just four. This here, it's got six screws. Now in terms of horsepower, I did do a lot of research and um, there's almost no quotes and no specs released for this motor. The only thing I was able to find is people say it has a lot of low end torque, which is what you would expect from a pretty low RPM helicopter engine. Of course, the transmission here is unique to this model alone. Right now, let's remove the cooling head, take a look inside the giant piston, see what condition it's in. Time to remove the head screws, remove the cooling head, see what the piston looks like inside. So hopefully nothing is stripped. Okay, yeah. So far, the screws out, seems to be okay. I'm gonna do the rest here. Last screw, and then the moment of truth. Nothing like looking inside a nitro motor. It's like Christmas year round, in the terms of nitro. Here we go guys, it's loose. It's about to come off. There we are. Oh man, it's not too bad inside actually. You know what, not too bad. It looks to be actually in pretty good condition there. Let's see. I can move the piston up and down with my finger, you know, by uh, way of the flywheel, but it seems fine. Yeah, I'm moving it. I'm gonna add some after run oil. Could never go wrong with this stuff. I'm gonna coat it. We're going to move it up and down a little bit. Yeah, it seems to be even freer than before. Now I got a little surprise for you. I'm going to remove the cooling head of this .28. Check this out, guys. Oh, it surprised me. The head button's still in there. Got to remove this. Here it is, side by side. The .28 on the left. And of course the .50 Team Associated 8.0 here on the right. You can clearly tell that the right cylinder and piston here is enormous compared to this .28. Now 28 is no slouch, that's already pretty much one of the largest nitro motors you can get. Here's a bit of a closer view inside the motor, I'm going to spin it over a little bit. We can take a look inside. The sleeve looks to be in really good condition. I don't see any scoring, any marks, any nicks on it. That discoloration on top of the piston is fine. You know, I've ran engines that were way, way dirtier than this, so this is no problem at all. The cooling head itself seems to be okay. I'm clearly going to be washing it. One of the fins on top is bent. This is pretty normal. It doesn't affect the performance at all. What really matters, I just want to see if the glow plug itself still works. Let me stick this glow igniter in here, and it should glow red. Okay, yeah, not bad. And if I turn the light off, you guys can clearly see that the glow plug is working. So this uh, dynamite lithium polymer glow igniter, if it has a green LED, that means the plug is adequate and it is usable. If it was red, well, then there would be a break in the spiral loop there and it would need to be replaced. I'm probably gonna try running it as it is right now first, and then, you know, I'll probably go from there. All right, guys, we made it to the end. I hope you enjoyed all of these interesting facts about the MGT 8.0. I really loved looking inside the motor. For me, that's probably the most exciting thing when you open up an old nitro engine and then you see the condition that it's in. I'm going to be holding this up like a trophy for the remainder of this video just so everybody could get a good look inside of that nice .50 helicopter size engine. Anyways, guys, in the next video, I guarantee you we will be putting some nitro fuel into this. This is going to be running sooner or later, and by sooner, I mean in the next part. I just want to make sure I give this thing its fair share of information compared to every other nitro truck I have. And actually, there's about 30% uh, of my fleet that I didn't show in this video because it just simply would not fit in the frame of the camera I'm using. But guys, if you like this type of stuff, you know this is vintage nitro history here. We're going to be making nitro 
Metro great again. I am on my way to doing that. And this giant helicopter size engine is going to help us get there. Guys, thanks so much for watching. Please comment, like, and subscribe. And see you in part four later.